Hello, everybody. Yay, it's time for a live chat. <laughs> so whoever is joining late, a few hundred people just watched my latest speculation video. Um, so what do you guys think? I want to hear, does anybody have a good explanation how these four girls did not see Rick and how he did not see them? Sweet dude, Shibby. It was a white man on Whiteman Drive. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, they say in the Frank's memo, they said that I guess it was entered incorrectly into the Orion system as Richard Allen Whiteman. But why would the last name have anything to do with why they never properly followed up with Rick? Yeah, so we're just like, whatever, chatting. How long is this going to last? Um, <laughs> we're at 59 seconds. Usually I do like two hours and 59 minutes. I don't know. My voice is kind of going bye-bye. So we'll see how this turns out. Um, let's see what you guys want to talk about. What in the hell? Gangster computer god. I lost my baby ball python and have been searching all day, finally taking a break. Oh my gosh. Good luck finding your snake. Look in your trousers. Sorry, I sometimes I ad lib jokes and they're inappropriate. Anyway, <laughs> Johannes, yes, somebody's not telling the truth. I don't know. If you ask me, it seems like Rick is not telling the truth. If he walked the same trails as these four girls, all five of these people were on the trails between noon to, uh, for like twelve thirty to one thirty. They never saw each other. And I, I'm, I know I titled my video, How Did Rick Not See Bridge Guy? But it's more about how did Rick and these four girls not see each other? I can't with it. Um, Peter said, no, Peter wants to call in just to yell at me or about the a Texas somebody. I don't, I, don't, I, don't know that, I don't know that case that you're talking about, Peter. And I try to avoid looking at new cases because I kind of get obsessed with them. Hi, human animal. People also need to explain if they insist he parked, quote unquote, in town, explain why he didn't describe that route and seeing different people and why people didn't see him along the town route to the trail. That's a very good point. Yeah, some people say there was an old Farm Bureau building like in the closer in the center of Delphi. Uh, I don't think so. Well, people say that I think they said that that building had been turned into a parking lot. So I have not really investigated it that much. I haven't put my Sleuth or Vandross detective agency badge on. Um, <laughs> so I don't know, is is there even a building there? Because Rick said in October, 2022, he parked next to an old building. I know some people before were saying, well, Rick said he parked next to the old Farm Bureau building. We don't know that since Danny Doolin can't find this recording. So the 2017 tip narrative just said he parked next to an old building. It did not say Rick said he parked next to, oh, sorry, he said he parked next to the old Farm Bureau building. Wait, let me say that again. The tip narrative said he parked next to the old Farm Bureau building. So it could have been Rick saying to Doolin, the conservation officer, I parked next to an old building. And did Doolin incorrectly identify that as the old Farm Bureau building, which who are you going to believe, Rick or Doolin, when it comes to getting things correct? Federico, this is, um, I don't know. Sometimes I look at webcams around the world because I guess I'm bored in my recliner. And this is at night in the US. And this is a morning sunrise somewhere in Italy. Oh, let's see. Long, yeah, there's a lot of um, differing, differing opinions in my live chat. So I, all I ask is that you be polite to other people. Hi, Lone Pony. Lone Pony says Rick's timeline is BS. I don't know. Sweet dude, Shibby. There's only 50 other keywords the search query would have picked up, but it was lost. I know. It's like... If it was the 74th tip in the Orion FBI system, why were police not going back to the beginning 
of their investigation on the first anniversary, the second year anniversary, third, fourth, fifth. It's like, why? I know that Holman at one point said one of their biggest concerns is that they missed something early on and that they would go back and check things. But I don't know. There, there, there were a lot of mistakes. And unfortunately, it's had negative consequences unless Rick is truly not bridge guy. And then this whole thing about missing his um, tip or whatever has absolutely no consequence. And my biggest concern, or one of them, is if Rick truly is not bridge guy, then this case is totally cold. Hi, CJK. Talk about extremely concerning vitriolic hate towards the families and the judge. If you don't like somebody, ignore them, and then you won't get triggered by them. That's my that's Tom's tip of the day. And also, if somebody's being a jerk to you, they're probably being a jerk to a lot of other people. So let somebody else get revenge on them so you don't get in trouble. <laughs> also, do not host live chats. Hi, Cranky Babushka. You know, I love your screen name. Please don't write words that I don't know the description to, or else I'm going to have to ask Siri. The pink gingham. I don't know. Should I ask Siri? I'm going to ask Siri. Hey, Siri. What's a gingham? Here's what I found. Gingham, also called vichy check, is a medium weight balanced plain woven fabric, typically tartan, striped or checked duotone patterns in bright color and in white made from dyed cotton or cotton blended yarns. Oh, at least we learned one thing during this live chat. Thank you. This is, yeah, this is orange and white. Oh my gosh, I can't. When is this live chat over? Susie Q, and to boot, he walked himself in there that day or whatever. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. You mean like Rick called police? Well, some people say, well, if Rick is innocent, then he was just being a concerned citizen and helpful. Well, that's what the defense team and other people say, which that brings up some other issues. So why would Rick call the police if he truly was bridge guy? And that's a valid point. My answer to that, if Rick is being, or if Rick truly was the killer, was he concerned that those girls that he, if, and he arrived around 1.30 and he passed the four girls instead of three, was his concern that those girls could have come into CBS and identified him. Also, will will any of these four girls get on the stand at his trial, if it ever happens, and say, yes, that man over there, Richard Allen, is the guy I saw. My concern with that is it wasn't included in the PCA, but the girl said that the the BG, essentially, they were shown a picture of Lib from Libby's screenshot or whatever, and they said the guy they passed around 1.30 was matching bridge guy however it's the girl said he had like a face covering or scarf up to his nose and he had a short built hat and a hood so my concern with that is how did they say he had gray hair if most of his hair was covered and rick had a crew cut a short haircut and if his um gray goatee was covered i don't know i think in one of the doug rice um screenshots doug rice is the guy who talked to one of these girls, the girl who said hi to Bridge Guy. And I think he said that the gray hair was sticking out from the sides of the hood, which you could interpret that, well, did Bridge Guy have really long hair? And if so, Rick did not have long hair. So we'll have to wait for the trial to hear if these witnesses say that Bridge Guy had long hair. Hi, Salty Beach. I can't wait for this trial so we can analyze all the evidence yeah, it's also about the jury analyzing it too. None of our opinions matter, so sorry to break it to anybody, including me. Devoted to Mariah, exactly. And how did Rick not see Bridge Guy, any Bridge Guy? I don't know. Maybe someday we'll find out. Um, yeah, Doolin, I think is now like, I don't know if he's the fire chief or I think he works for the Delphi uh, fire department. Hi, Shelly. Welcome. I hope you're feeling better. Federico. Hola. 
I know law enforcement is not an easy job. I agree, but this is ridiculous, which I also agree with. Remember the tentacles. Yeah. So everybody's favorite Doug Carter, which we haven't heard from him in a while. Can somebody check on him? Um, we need a new Doug Carter quote. Uh, tentacles. Yeah. What are the tentacles that Doug Carter was talking about after Rick got arrested? Was it because they wasted time looking into Kagan Klein and his dad? I don't know. I guess it still remains to be seen if Kagan or his dad were involved, but it's almost been seven years since police started to look into them and still no charges, uh, at least related to Delphi. Cecil Hotel, maybe he saw them coming, so he hid. They would not see him. He lied, he saw them, and hid. What? Rick? Why is Rick playing hide-and-go-seek in the woods of Delphi? Some people said maybe he was playing, they were all playing Pokemon and looking at their phones so they didn't see each other. If you saw my video that I just showed, I mean, the, the um, benches are so close to the trail. I know that the final sixth one is maybe like 25 feet away, but still, how can these girls walk from Freedom Bridge to the High Bridge and back and not see Rick where he said he was, where he said he was? Criminality, hello. There is a Farm Bureau building right next to the Mexican restaurant. Is it currently open? And why, why would they say old Farm Bureau building? Would it qualify as an old building? Because as I said, in the Franks memo, the defense kept saying there was an old car from the 1960s that Witness 4 saw at 215, which proved that Rick had left CPS near the trail. So if the defense is saying Rick parked at CPS and left around 130, then I'm trying not to get involved in the Mexican restaurant. Is it Taco Bell? Here's my Taco Bell cup. Federico says, are the many tentacles the Odin stuff? I, I don't know if Doug Carter meant that they, they went down a bunch of different avenues, including Odinism, which some people would say, well, they didn't investigate it enough, but I guess we'll see. Peter wants to know, if Rick is not telling the truth, then why does law enforcement need to lie? That's a good point. And the Texas Guardsmen also leaked evidence totally related to this case. Texas Guardsman? I don't know what you're talking about. Is that the Mark Cohen guy that you're talking about? Baxter, I think. Nanotechnology, invisibility, cloaking material. I'm telling you, the Odin group invented it and use it for their gatherings. When I was reading the Franks memo, there were certain things that were definitely eyebrow raising, especially the confessions of Elvis Fields, as I've said, why would I believe Rick's confessions and not believe Elvis Fields? And if I don't believe Elvis Fields, should I not believe Rick's? I don't know. I know that the sisters, um, or at least one of the sisters of Elvis Fields, who's one of these quote unquote Odinist guys who said he was um, on the trails and in the woods and spit on one of the girls. Um, I guess his sister said he was like incoherent while he was saying that, but I guess also the defense is saying Rick was also incoherent when he confessed, quote unquote, allegedly to his wife on the phone. I don't know. I'm curious to see what police did to clear all of these Odinists referenced in the Franks memo. Gangster computer god, I really wish this trial would happen already. There's so much craziness around it and it's only getting worse. I feel so bad for the families. I totally agree with you. It's crazy that we're at a point now where the the judge and the attorneys have their own attorneys. And they're essentially going back and forth saying, you suck, no, you suck. <laughs> it's like, I, I mean, I'm fine with Judge Gull being replaced with somebody like a former Supreme Court judge. But I've also said that I, I think that um, Baldwin and Rosie aren't the most competent attorneys. And I want Rick to have his be the best attorneys. Humanimal says, farm insurance building, psychic sleuth started that rumor. She calls herself unsolved crimes on now alley. The notion is ridiculous. 
will you do videos about John Doe's? No, but I'm trying to like find some uh, fugitives. So if I find one, I'll do a video about how I did it. Hi, Simone. Thank you. Hi, the simulation. Trial will be interesting. The prosecution has a lot to overcome from the shoddy investigation to Carter's riddles to the fact that McClelland isn't as likable or experienced as the defense attorneys. Well, it depends who you ask, but McClelland is getting help. He, a guy named James Luttrell is a um, former prosecutor from Indiana, a different county, but he is helping Nick. It's not Capri or Capri. Yeah, thank you for like people in Europe for staying up late to join everybody else. If it's a normal time, I'm not going to thank you. <laughs> Hi, Venus Gal. I think they have plenty, but there's no doubt the conservation officer seriously affected this case. Yes, correct. Um, we have to remind ourselves that we don't know all the evidence that police have. So we need to slow our roll. Digital says Liggett could have cleared up parking, sorry, cleared parking up by asking Rick instead of assuming. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know we're all curious to see this October 13th and 26 or yeah, 26 videotaped interviews. Hopefully they learn to press, re press record um, of Rick and his wife. CJK makes a good point. We don't know what Doolin did and didn't do, nor exactly how, who processed or misplaced the notes. Correct. Hi, Patricia. In the five years before Rick's quote unquote admission, there was not one single mention of Odinus. And who said that Odinus slaughter kids as part of their rituals anyway? There were some rumors that there were possibly, I know that um, Robert Ives, the former prosecutor, mentioned uh, non secular thing uh, signatures at the crime scene. He said two to three, I believe. So what were those? Would you? qualify the branches on Abby and Libby as one each. And then the third would be Libby's blood on the tree, which some people say was written in the F rune. I don't know. There were rumors uh, though, Patricia, about like possible Odinism or something like that, but it wasn't like in the mainstream rumors. Jeff says Rick Allen was on the trails earlier than the cops say. That is why he didn't see Bridge Guy. The cops are liars, accepted. Well, did you just watch my video? How can you explain how Rick did not see the four girls for 60 minutes that all five of them were on the trails? If you have a good explanation, I'll take it into consideration. Thank you, Michelle. You rock. I appreciate it. I appreciate, appreciate your generosity. Thank you. I just lost my place though. <laughs> um, how far behind am I? Only 14 minutes. Crystal makes a good point. Why didn't the conservation officer realized the picture of bridge guy as Rick, like two days later. And also Doolin was on the stage, I believe February 22nd, 2017. So it's not like he like was not involved in this case. However, the bridge guy video, it's so blurry. We can't even see like the shape of the eyebrows or the eyes or the mouth. It's like, if we can't determine the individual features, how can we determine the overall face. I, I do not see Rick's face in the Bridge Guy video, but I think it's so blurry that there's kind of like two phases in the two second clip that we can see. One at the beginning and one at the end.
Oscar, if Rick is not bridge guy, then I guess it's an Odinist, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, some people said maybe the, uh, the branches were put on the girls as a way to hide them and not necessarily leaving some kind of message related to Odinism. And also, if you're an Odinist who, and a white supremacist who just killed two white girls, which makes no sense to me, why are you leaving your business card at the crime scene saying, okay, police, these are Odinist symbols. Make sure you look for Odinists as your main suspects. That does not add up to me. Matlock, law enforcement could have gone back to Rick when they asked public for information about a car parked at CPS. As I said in my video before, I just can't get past, as these law enforcement officers have come in or went into the CVS where Rick worked for five years, how engaging was Rick with these police officers asking about the case? I mean, if you truly were innocent and on the trails new to 130, wouldn't you be freaked out that a killer murdered two girls when you have a daughter who's like 22 at the time of the murders? Don't you want to say, oh, is there any updates on the case? Why would he not say after April 2019, I was parked at CPS from noon to 1.30. I did, I did or did not see any cars parked at CPS. Are police going to testify at Rick's trial that they went into CVS frequently? I won't make a joke about what they're buying, but will they say Rick never brought up the Delphi case to me? He never said that he was parked at CPS from noon to 1.30. I don't know. Hi, Kennedy. Rick should have been immediately investigated in 2017 after the grocery store interview to be cleared or charged. Yeah, I know. So what was the issue? that Doolin wrote follow-up, figure out who the three girls are on the trails that Rick said he saw around 12 or five. What did police do to identify those girls? And why did they not talk to Rick a second time? If this tip narrative says he was there at the time of the murders from 1.30 to 3.30, even if that's not true, if Doolin wrote that wrong on the tip narrative. Thank you, Cecil Hotel. I appreciate it. And thank you, um, Cece. I appreciate you. Jeff says the cops did not record Rick's statements because they wanted to and did change it to fit their story. Well, have you seen the, you, you think that they did not record October 13th and 26th? I don't know. There's no way that they, they did not. If it turns out that they're like, oh, we didn't push record. Oh my God, I'd lose it. And obviously all of you would too. Oh, only three more hours. We're at 23 minutes. <laughs> it's pronounced ging am. Oh my gosh. I'm never going to use it. I don't need to learn how to say it. Oh my gosh. Fig solves, Jeff, law enforcement knew in 2017 that they were going to frame Rick five years later. Yeah, this whole framing thing of Rick and saying he's a patsy, which, mean, which means they, law enforcement knew they were arresting Rick falsely. It does not add up to me. I know some people say, oh, well, Tony Liggett wanted, wanted to win the sheriff's election, which happened a few weeks, at, like a week or less than, less than two weeks after Rick was arrested. And I said in various other videos that yes, Rick or Liggett getting a $40,000 more a year increase in his salary becoming sheriff is a great motivation for him, but he was not the only person in charge of arresting Rick and reviewing the evidence. So you really think like Holman and McClelland were like, yeah, okay. Liggett is going to throw us a pizza party with his new sheriff's salary if we falsely frame Rick. They did not know 
what Rick did that day, I mean, they talked to him October 13th and he said, apparently to them, he was there noon to 1.30. Maybe he said after he went to the trails, he went home. But as I've stated previously, what if Rick went to McDonald's for lunch at 1.40 and he can call his credit card company and pro provide a receipt showing Rick at, Richard uh, M. Allen's credit card was used at the Delphi McDonald's at whatever, 140. That totally clears Rick. But police would not know if Rick had done that and had that evidence to clear himself. Also, they would not know what his phone data showed or his car data. So you really thought they were just like, oh, let's hope for the best? I, I don't think so. Cecil Hotel, Rick lied about seeing Abby and Libby, same with the four girls. Were there four or three? Maybe the fourth was Rick from a distance. He would look like a chubby gal. No, so in the PCA, they only had three of the four juveniles around 1.30 because the younger sister, um, she I guess she did not get a good look at Bridge Guy as he walked past. So I guess her, she just wasn't worth talking to her, at least including in the PCA. Susie, is Rick talking any? He's only talking to family and attorneys. Hi, Chris. Peter, who is the Texas Guardsman? I need clarification. And where did he get the leaked evidence from? You learned it from me? I never said anything about a Texas Guardsman. <laughs> yeah, everybody should go out and party and not watch me. Thank you, Shelly. My motto for this live, agree to disagree kindly. Yeah, my moderators will ban you if you get too rude. But what about this um, recorded statement statement from Doolin? If it was on a tape recorder, I don't know. I know that in the defense press release in December 2022, they said Rick does not record. Remember, if it was uh, tape recorded, but Doolin was writing um, notes on a pad. But if he had his phone out, Doolin said he thought he recorded all of his witness interviews. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, but he just happened to um, misplace Rick's. But if he did it on a voice note on his phone, why can't they use some, some kind of software to retrieve that deleted recording? And why did they not have a procedure where anybody who was getting audio taped interviews with people, they should submit it to the unified command within that day or the next day. It seems like there's like not just so many mistakes, but like so much disorganization in this investigation. And I understand like there's like 80,000 tips from crazy people all over the world. And there's like, I think at one point there was 200 police officers helping out in the first few weeks. So I understand it was like <sighs> craziness, but it just seems very disorganized. Sorry, I'm looking for um, something to highlight. Ruby says, the bigger question is, did Bridge Guy see Rick? I, I don't know. So we, we know that Bridge Guy came from Freedom Bridge area. And he passed these four girls around 1.30. And Rick says he left CPS at 1.30. In April 2019, police said they think Bridge Guy parked at CPS where Rick had just left, where Rick had just pulled out of this unusual parking spot against CPS within what, like 15 seconds of Rick pulling out, Bridge Guy pulls into CPS and pulls into the same odd spot against CPS. I mean, it's just like tons of coincidences.
Hi, dark, sacred night. I have never understood why the FBI did not estimate bridge guy's height, then look for a five foot five white guy searching driver's licenses from DMV. Should have been solved within a week. Well, yeah, for a variety of reasons, but I under, I totally agree with you. Why not get people who are like five foot two to six foot four, like every inch within that height range, use an iPhone six like Libby had, stand in the area where she was videotaping bridge guy and have everybody walk in that same spot or stand and then compare them in like a compare bridge guy in a photo program with these various heights to get a better height other than five foot six to five foot 10 of height range. I know a lot of people have said, well, Rick is either five, three or five foot four, the wanted poster. And one of the teenage witnesses said he was up to five foot 10 or not more than five foot 10. But um, Bill Labrado, Rick's temporary public defender, just said this week that Rick is five foot six. And if he was wearing a hat and a hood, I don't know, he could appear like depending, depending how big the hood is, it could add like two to three inches up to five foot nine. So I don't know. I know the one juvenile girl said he was short. But I guess what is short and around her height and she was five foot six. Hi, Tiff. I'll update my attendance spreadsheet. Jeff, I know you disagree with some stuff. Just please be polite and don't cross the line or you're going to get banned by my moderators. Devoted to Mariah, Doug Carter is silent and we need him. <laughs> we are used to his riddles. I think he's um, retiring. Is it at the end of this year? I think he's retiring when Governor Holcomb, uh, maybe his term is up, which may be January 2025. I'm not sure. Hugh Manimal says, it seems like the public expect to have all the evidence and arguments presented to them now as if they were in court. We think we are the jury and we are not. We agree that 12 representatives are. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're right. Oh my gosh, I can't. Criminality says the old building, the Farm Bureau building was torn down and made into a parking lot for the new building. All right, thanks. Yeah, I'm obviously like 20 minutes behind. But if Rick parked next to an old building, that doesn't add up that he parked next to a new building at the old Farm Bureau location. So I just solved that so we can move on from that. Rick parked at CPS. And hi, Anna. It's hard to believe Rick was seen by all those witnesses, including one who said bridge guy looked like Jimmy Duvall, who looks like Rick, and no one ever considered Rick working at CVS, socializing and living in Delphi. Um, it depends who you ask. Maybe somebody did interact with Rick at CVS, but they looked at his height and thought, no, even though they had suspicions. Next, will somebody testify to that at the trial? Not that it would really matter, but that might be a true statement that I just said, but I won't say who. All right, thank you for clarifying, love to hunt. There are no Taco Bells in small towns. All right, no, I'm not going to Delphi. Criminality, the Mexican restaurant is owned by Rick's neighbors. Corruption. All right, sorry. Um, <laughs> Cranky Babushka, I don't think he had enough time to do all the Odin stuff. I think he just put branches over them, et cetera, just my opinion. I, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I, I've only seen the sketches of the, bread, uh, the branches on Abby and Libby. I have seen the F tree. 
And as I've said previously, I mean, it does seem somewhat intentional because that vertical line seems to be very straight. But if in like a rune, the F, there's two different runes. I think there's Ansu's and Fehu. And in one, the, the horizontal lines go up and in the other, they go down. But in the F tree, that doesn't seem to match either one. Sorry, I'm not frozen when I do this. I'm just looking for comments. Hi, little butterball. <laughs> what are your thoughts about the interim defense attorney, William Labredo, going on Core TV and saying that he believes one girl was sacrificed and the other was murdered? Yeah, so obviously this guy has more access to the evidence than us. So his opinions and statements should be taken more seriously than some clown hosting a live chat. But so, yeah, he said he thinks Rick is 100 percent innocent and not involved in all at all in these murders. So. Like, can he answer me and say, how did Rick not see these four girls between uh, 1230 to 130? Um, yeah, I was surprised to read that he or hear that he said, I guess he meant possibly Libby since she was maybe had more like she was found naked, obviously, and maybe her body had more damage. So he said one of them was sacrificed and the other was, I don't know what he said about the other one, what his terminology was. Uh, it was surprising. I mean, obviously we read the Frank's memo where they kind of went through each of these steps saying that an Odinist would have done this. But as people have stated, like, what is a what was the ritual that these Odinists did? And why did nobody see a group of Odinists? Why did Rick not see a group of Odinists setting up? I don't know. Hi, Delphi dummies. Shelly wants to know, how did Elvis Fields, the guy who supposedly confessed to his two sisters, know about the sticks placed around Abby's head? And his sister took a polygraph and passed that he indeed said that seven years ago. These are valid questions, Shelley. He said that there were, he put horns or antlers around or in Abby's hair. And some people who have seen the crime scene photo say they do not look like horns or antlers. And I guess some people say they do. But yeah, I mean, that seems to be suspicious that he would even know that was there. He did say he spit on one of the girls, but his DNA obviously did not match the crime scene, but neither did Rick's. One thing I thought was, did he possibly spit on Libby's tie-dye shirt? And that was one of the reasons, like I said in my video, were those items in the creek because bridge guy, whoever, thought there was some kind of DNA transfer. And by dunking those items under the water in the creek, it would maybe remove the DNA and hopefully float away far enough that people would never find them, but they obviously did. So, and his sister took a polygraph. Yeah. Well, she passed it saying that he said it, but as I stated before, he apparently was like not in a sound mind when he said it, he was incoherent and rambling like me hosting a live chat and, um, what? The other sister, she was interviewed by police three times and she did not admit to Elvis telling her his like confession or whatever until the third interview with police. So why was she lying to police the first two times? Was she just protecting her brother? I, I don't know. But th those are all valid questions. Venus Gal, this trial is a long way off in my opinion. Don't expect a speedy trial regardless of talk. Yeah, well, the defense team said, Rick is suffering. We want a speedy trial. And then Rosie's like, I can't make the February 12th hearing. I'm on vacation. I don't know. I, I, I agree with Rosie that 11 days is probably not enough for him to prepare for February 12th. So for people who don't know, the defense filed a, um, what was it? Some kind of motion saying, the defense is incompetent and should be removed or at least punished. Um, 
Go said they would have a hearing on February 12th for that contempt hearing and also to discuss these four upgraded charges that McClelland has charged Rick, not just as being bridge guy, but as being the murderer. And a lot of people say, well, would, would we find out more information at this February 12th hearing and evidence why McClelland felt like he could add those other charges? So I guess we'll find out this week what Auntie Gull is going to decide. Human animal. Anybody, anyone know the color of the old car reported as part? No, we don't because the defense only referred to it as not black. I roll. Anyway, sorry, not you, but the defense. So if like witness four drove by, what color did she say? If she said it was yellow, then write that in the Frank's memo. Don't just say it was not black, trying to take attention away from Rick's black car. Uh-oh, Tom's going to go off. Um, in the Frank's memo, yeah, so the defense kept talking about this old 1960s Mercury Comet that Witness 4 said looked like her dad's car from the 1960s as she left around 2.15. She would have passed CPS. Not once in the Frank's memo did the defense reference the 210 or 228 cars or the witnesses who drove by and did not see a car from the 1960s because that went against the narrative that the defense was pushing which some people say i'm pushing a narrative i'm not they the defense also never once mentioned the 127 pm who's your harvester camera which supposedly has a car matching rick's appears to match rick's there's two different pcas one says it resembles um rick's car one says it appears to match the defense never referenced that, and they never referenced these four girls who walked within a few feet of Bridge Guy and said he was in his 40s to 50s because they wanted to say witness four from 50 feet away. Who knows what her eyesight was? I mean, I'm not saying like she's blind or anything, but I, as a jury member, I'm going to believe the eyewitness testimony of people who walk within three feet of somebody more than I would somebody who is... 50 feet away and the sun was in her eyes compared to these girls leaving where the sun was not in their eyes. I don't know. I think the eyesight of an eyewitness is uh, valid to look into. Oh my gosh. Federico, there's a lot of partici participation today. You'll be two days behind in chat. We're at 42 minutes. Help me. All right. Sweet dude Shibby, Tony Liggett said, tan is blue, a muddy fighter implies bloody too, and a Ford Comet PT Cruiser smart car is a Ford Focus. <sighs> yes, however, the Frank's memo repeatedly kept, because the main issue or reason for the Frank's memo was to get a hearing because they said, Liggett lied about these certain things, but the requirement for a Frank's hearing is if these lies were removed from the search warrant. Would Judge Diener have not agreed to let police search Rick's house? The defense kept repeatedly um, referring to the muddy, bloody witness at 3.57 p.m. and said Liggett lied because in 2017, that driver said she saw a guy walking who had a tan or i think it was light uh i don't remember the exact words but as you said it was either tan or beige or a lighter color more close to brown a light brown than um, dark blue however my issue with that was they kept referring to her 2017 interview so at some point later did she say 2018 and after okay it could have been a dark blue jacket so technically in the PCA or search warrant or whatever, Liggett did not lie because at a certain point after, after 2017, she did say it could have been blue and not tan. She was, according to the PCA, she was shown Libby's screenshot from a bridge guy. And this driver said, yes, that matched the guy. So why is she saying that it matched him, the guy she saw, if the jack was a totally different color? That's what I want to hear at the trial. The muddy, the part where she also did not say he was bloody. People disagree with me, but if somebody says, like, 
the driver said he appeared to have gotten into a fight. So if somebody says to you, or you say to somebody, you saw somebody who got into a fight, what would a characteristic of a person who gotten into a fight look like? Their hair's messed up, like a black eye or whatever, messed up clothing. So she said that there appeared to be like mud. I don't know, we'll have to wait and hear what she said, but I was not as triggered by the inclusion of somebody being bloody as a possible characteristic of um, somebody who got into a fight. Obviously, if somebody's driving at like 30 miles an hour, how are you going to know what's blood and what's mud? So I understand that some people get upset about that. Your final comment, and I'm not highlighting your comments anywhere. No, I'm kidding. A Ford Comet from the 1960s, PT Cruiser smart car is a Ford Focus. I think a, um, a PT Cruiser can be described as funky looking. Also, a smart car is not, not a um, normal looking car. I don't think Rick's hatchback Ford Focus is a normal looking sedan. I'm not going to pull it up now, but um, I show it in my previous, the video we just watched. Um, but as I said before, the 210 and 228 drivers did not see a car from the 1960s. I'm curious to hear why Witness 4 felt like she saw this car from the 1960s. Driving on 300, and I'll get on to the next top, or topic soon. If you saw my um, video before of the drone footage from the 14th, there's like some dead brush or whatever, grass or weeds that look to be a few feet high. So if somebody's driving on 300, did that partially hide like the back of Rick's car so it would look smaller like a smart car? How long are people looking at CPS at these cars knowing there's going to be a test in a few days or something? I don't know. <laughs> Aspen Connor says, but we know what Elvis Field said in his confession, and apparently it did not match what the killer did and could not be confirmed because Elvis Fields was not arrested. That's a good point. Hi, Gen Z. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten. Hi, Laura Lie Snow. Yeah, people get triggered that I don't call him Richard, but if his friends called him Richard, I mean, or Rick, and his wife called him Ricky, that's what he goes by. So whatever, don't get triggered. <laughs> CJK says, or you can get triggered if you want. Go watch Gray Hughes. CJK, there aren't sticks by Abby's head. We've heard from some who've seen the photos, they weren't there not in that manner like a horn or antlers like this guy talked about fig Sol says elvis fields has the mental capacity of a seven-year-old his confessions weren't recorded like rick's were and there were no sticks as horns at the scene Oscar wants to know, will Bridge Guy get executed or prison? As of this point, we don't know for sure if Rick is Bridge Guy or not. I guess it remains to be seen if McClelland is going to try and get the death penalty for Rick. I, I, I don't know. The unhinged, the defense daddies won't back down. Okay. Thank you for the weather update for Colorado. <laughs> Kennedy, how did Elvis know the details of the murders to tell his sister the day after? He did say something like he was on, like Abigail was misbehaving or something like that. However, we do not know the exact time because that was the next day that he said that I'm almost certain on the 14th. On the local news, on the night of the 13th, I know that Abby's mom was on the news 
and also Libby's grandfather. So it was a fairly large story as of the night of the 13th. So Elvis would have known the names of these girls who were missing. I, I agree though that he is suspicious, but I wanna hear what law enforcement did to look into him and people say, well, they didn't do enough, but as of I think 2020, they were still interviewing his sisters. So they were doing something. <laughs> Hi, CC. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for, it looks like you're in England. Thanks for the pounds. I'm a half hour behind. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Fig Solve says, Judge Gull makes it for our family gatherings all the time. So good. Yeah, some stupid people say that Judge Gull is the aunt of Fig Sol's eye roll. Next. Die says to Kennedy, my guess is hearing about the crime scene from his Delphi buds. Well, then why, why was um, Brad Holder apparently seen at his work and he clocked out at 245, which means he cannot be bridge guy. Where's this six foot five Patrick Westfall? Rick didn't see a six foot five giant walking through the woods or on the trails. I don't know. Dawn's dawn as loaf how did rick know they were th there at that time and day we don't know if rick truly is bridge guy or whoever bridge guy is was this something random i've said many times and i think this is one thing that very few of us or most of us agree on there seems to be some kind of items in bridge guy's jacket like what the hell's in there to be blunt um so it seems like it could have been somebody trying, like trying to do something. I don't know. Did the opportunity present itself when he saw Abby and Libby? It was said that Rick often went to the trails. He lived in Delphi for 11 years. He, he moved there in 2016 or 2006. I don't know. As he often went to the trails and passed maybe teenage girls, did he get some kind of sexual motive that he finally acted on on February 13th? I don't know. Fig solves Elvis Fields drove, as far as I know, he said on, on Facebook after the Frank's memo came out, he said he did not even have a car. He said he drove his turtle. That's what he said on Facebook. He's like, oh, so my turtle was really fast to get me from Rushville two hours away to Delphi. I know that uh, the defense team wrote in the Frank's memo that the phone of Elvis Fields did not have any movement or it was not used at all on the day of the murders between 10.30 a.m. and uh, 7 p.m. But if he lived two hours away from Delphi, he would have had to leave. Some people said maybe Elvis Fields was this guy seen at the start of the private drive by the couple at around 8.30 a.m. So if Elvis Fields was hanging out at that area at 8.30 a.m. and he lives two hours away, he should have left by 6.30 a.m. So what did his phone show between 6.30 and 8.30? Is that how they knew that he was in at least Rushville early in the morning and not that 8.30 person? Hi, Echo Chamber and live. Abby dressed in Libby's clothes is a signature. Yeah, so apparently, I don't know, there's this whole issue. Did Abby have all of her clothes taken off and did whoever do this? redress her i guess entire body there's been talk i have not seen the crime scene photos and i don't want to but i think it's been said that libby's sweatshirt was put on abby and also possibly libby's jeans were put on top of um abby's so i don't know cranky babushka this odinous stuff reminds me of sat satanic panic from the 80s and 90s ridiculous I, I agree, like, even though there are some concerning things about these accused Odinists, which 
just a reminder, it was not Baldwin and Rosie who did come up with that. It was stuff they got from this click report, these four officers from the Rushville area who were also part of the FBI task force. And I think the FBI behavioral analyst unit said there was definitely, I forget what the quote was, but they said something about it was def Odinists were definitely involved. And also the Purdue professor said, I don't know, he, he said, sorry, some of these quotes are hard to remember. It was uh, a given that somebody was trying to recreate Germanic runic script, I guess by um, putting the branches on Abby and Libby in a certain fashion. However, he said he could not interpret them. And on a previous live chat, I said, well, if I'm a jury member and this professor is on the stand trying to explain this stuff to me, and the defense is trying to get me to believe that Odinus killed Abby and Libby, but this professor cannot say, okay, on Abby's body, these three branches were put in the shape of this specific rune, and it means this meaning. On Libby, it was this rune, it has this meaning, and on the F tree, it's either the Fehu or Ansu's, and it means that, and all three together mean this is a message left by the Odinists. He said he can't interpret it, and so I said, well, if he can't even say what rune it is, how am I supposed to believe that that's what it was and not just random putting branches on? And so this person commented back, well, maybe he did know which rune it was, but he could not interpret what the message was supposed to be. I don't know. We'll have to wait for the trial. Yes, I, that's what I just said, uh, Daniel. I'm now 40 minutes behind, sorry. <laughs> She Elf wants to know, has anybody ever heard of a single Odinist crime? It's so weird. I think we would hear about it. I have not. Hi, Jamie Hicks. I want to gift Fran a spa treatment with the, well, this is all over. Uh-oh, you're going to get attacked, Jamie. Peace and love, y'all. Kevin says, must have crossed Bridge Guy's mind to pull the gun on the four girls and lead them to a secluded spot or um, witness four, but he does not. He waits and has to get lucky to encounter the girls or he knew they'd be there. My issue with that is, are you really gonna kidnap four girls near near Freedom Bridge? He has no idea who's coming from Free uh, High Bridge. No offense, Kevin. <laughs> So, or why did he not do this to witness four, uh, witness four? We don't know for sure if he turned his head. I'm very curious to hear everything that witness four says. She said she walked to the high bridge and I don't feel like pulling it up because it's kind of hard to find some of these files on my computer. But if you've seen some of my previous live chats, like at the time in 2017, approaching high bridge looks a lot different than it does now. There was like this post and there was like branches and stuff like blocking platform one. So she would not have seen bridge guy until she like kind of turned around this area. So if you're a woman alone, or so you think you're alone in the woods and you see somebody on platform one, how far around this, these posts are you going to go? Like how long are you going to stand and stare at bridge guy on platform one? Did he turn his head? She gave a very detailed, um, description saying he was 20 at first, she said, with poofy hair. Later, she said he could have been as old as early 30s. I don't know. So may, if if Rick or Bridge Guy had some kind of sexual motive to see two teenage girls do stuff to each other, then seeing one woman did not satisfy that motive. I don't know. Anna says, it is extreme that two pairs of attorneys stating Rick is innocent. Imagine defense attorneys saying that about Charlie Manson. If Rick is proved to be extremely guilty, those lawyers look extra sleazy as opposed to regular sleazy. Um, I'm not saying that lawyers are sleazy, I'm kidding. Um, yes, it's very powerful that 
four attorneys are saying Rick is innocent. Why is the prosecutor saying he's guilty? Why is Jerry Holman, despite that list of seven items from the defense memo saying things such as Rick's um, DNA was not found at the crime scene, stuff about his social media, his phone. Despite that, even in this August 2023 deposition, which Holman said, yes, those are true. He said, why don't you ask your client? He's the one who killed Abby and Libby. So why does Holman, despite that good uh, stuff pointing towards Rick being innocent, still think that Rick is actually guilty? As I said, we just have to remind ourselves we do not have access to all the evidence. But as Anna said, the defense does since last November 1st. Um, the prosecutor said he's handed over everything. And then the prosecutor, I think last week, he complained that the defense is they have an obligation to hand over all of their evidence that they have found that they're going to present at a hearing or the trial. And Baldwin and Rosie have not given anything to McClelland. How dare they? But I, I do in my Frank's memo um, video. I know that's the one that was seven hours and five minutes long that nobody watched. Actually, a few people did. What did I say? What I'm thinking of here. Um, oh, yeah. The, the defense repeatedly said, well, as they were talking before about like these videotaped interviews with Elvis Fields family and Brad Holder, like 10, nine to 10 months into Baldwin and Rosie being on the case, they still had not received these interviews, these videotaped interviews from 2017. And I said, I mean, I do criticize like everybody. <laughs> so I criticized the defense or sorry, the prosecution saying, why is it taking this long to hand over videos that were like six years old? It's truly not acceptable, but I don't know that it's um, necessarily McClelland. As I said at the start of this live chat, it seems like law enforcement, law enforcement was so disorganized how were they even conducting this investigation before Rick was arrested if they needed this information? Was it all scattered? It seems like it was. I don't know. But I do agree um, McClelland waiting on sending over the Click letter from his attorney. So Click was one of these three guys who said he thought these Odinists were involved. And he sent a letter. He got He hired an attorney, or at least worked with one, to send a letter to McClelland saying, I read your PCA against Rick, and I feel like the onus that we looked into years ago, there's more evidence to prove that they were involved in the murders compared to what you put in your PCA against Rick. So McClelland did not hand over that letter to the defense for four months, which I do not have any idea how this stuff is supposed to work with um, giving evidence over by a certain timeline. I know, I think I looked online and the court rules for Carroll County, you have to share the evidence, I think, only 10 days before the start of the trial. So I agree that it could look shady that McClelland did not turn it over. However, could they have been sending over evidence in batches? So like the Odinist batch was being cooked up. I don't know. But I, I agree with the defense saying we did not know about this Odinist stuff until like the summer of 2020. Actually, no, they said that they started in April. But I understand that they were saying by not having it, we were kind of handicapped in our investigation and trying to prove that Rick is innocent. So I do agree that it's a total cluster. Sorry, just looking for comments. Venus Gal, maybe the conservation officer Doolin lost the tip on purpose. I can't help but wonder. I mean, Rick must have known some people in his town, in his own town. No. No, Venus gal. Move to Mars. I'm kidding. Um, it was entered in the FBI Orion system as the 74th tip. So Doolin is not the one who lost it. It seems like somebody else did not properly follow up on it. I think some people have said it may have been marked in the system as unfounded or something like that, where they did not believe Rick or something, which seems so stupid to not believe him and not follow up. Um, if this conservation officer is currently working for the Delphi Police Department, did he know 
Rick from CVS and say, oh, it can't be this guy. So I'm not going to really ask him too many probing questions. I, I don't know. I assume that he's going to testify um, dual in at the trial. Kennedy says the police officer stated that Elvis asked about the danger of his spit being found on one of the girls, correct? Well, it seems like that if they did match up his DNA to the crime scene, he would have been arrested many years ago, which you could also say about Rick and his DNA not being matched to the crime scene. It seems like in the wording that the defense said for like those seven items that were good for Rick, I don't know if they said his DNA was not found found at the crime scene. Uh, I'm not going to take time to try and find it. But some people have said, well, could that be excluding that maybe Abby and Libby's DNA was found in Rick's car or in a shed or something at his house? So that might be something to see at the trial. Humanimal, let's not forget, professors might describe them as runic, but not one person, professor or otherwise, has named what they're supposed to be. That's true. Lorelai, framing the defense perspective is BS, like people sputtering over the deceased three uh, Kansas City Chiefs fans being murdered instead of tragically overdosing, which, yeah, if you've seen that um, case, those guys, I guess they found fentanyl in their system and that's how they died and not like a murder. Federico, please do some octopus merchandise with tentacles. Somebody asked me the other day to make sure I have an ain't no shame in my rabbit hole game t-shirt in my online store and that's in my online store. Underneath this video, there's a link to my stupid merchandise. Salty Beach, right? Like the actual killers would leave clues as to their identity, AKA Odinus leaving Odinus symbols. Makes no sense. I, I agree with that. Hi, Brutally Honest. Thank you. I appreciate it. This equals strange slash worrying to me. On the 13th, searchers kept going till after midnight. Also that evening, an infrared drone flew over, both found zero. Um, I don't know. I know there's been debate about various things that you just said. If the girls cross this cold Creek when the temperature was like 40 and snow had melted over the previous few days, I don't, I don't know if a lot of people think like all three of these people must've been shivering. I don't know how much that would have lowered their body temperature. And then they were killed soon after. So would their body heat be still um being produced enough to be seen by an infrared drone I, I think there's been debate about whether it was a regular drone or something that could um see like body heat with people not finding them at night what i think about that is they did not find the girls supposedly until like 12 15 some people say it was earlier than that so at least with four to five or six hours of daylight, they did not find them. So if that, if it took that long in daylight, it could have taken longer in the dark. So I'm not that suspicious. I know some people say they must have been taken away from this crime scene if they were not seen um, or found at the night of the 13th, but I don't agree with that. Update your spreadsheet. <laughs> I need a drink. Hi, Bees9. Fun fact, if a witness or attorney even mentions results of a polygraph in court, it's an automatic mistrial. It's happened before. I don't know. Then don't mention it. Tiff says, Rick worked in a highly visible job at the CVS, the only pharmacy in a small town, and no one ID'd him as bridge guy for years. That's a good point. I mean, I don't know. That's a good point. <laughs> C. Taylor, the inaction and failure failure to follow up by Doolin is one of the biggest mystery, mysteries in this of this case. 
I don't know that it was Doolin's responsibility to do it. He took the interview. He, I don't know what the process was. If he went back to the command center and dropped his piece of paper into a bin, it was somebody else's responsibility to follow up and to enter into the database. It may have taken a few days to set up the FBI Orion database for this case. So I don't know. Hi, Firetech. You joined 45 minutes ago. <laughs> He's probably gone. You didn't miss, you don't miss much. We only learned what kind of shirt this is. Oh my gosh. Matlock, does CVS sell costume mustache or beards? So you think Bridge Guy was wearing a Groucho Marx eyeglasses and mustache? Criminality, Doolin states between uh, 130 to yeah, 130 to 3.30, verse the word from Rick. Semantics, but who knows? Well, my issue with this 130 to 3.30 thing written on the 2017 tip, some people have said at the time, like within, within the first few days, they thought Kelsey dropped off Abby and Libby around 1.30, and they thought it was all over by 3.30. So maybe these officers were told to look for people or ask people, were they on the trails between 1.30 to 3.30? So if you're dueling and you meet with Rick at the grocery store and your job is to see if he was there between 1.30 to 3.30, even if you said, were you there 1.30 to 3.30? And Rick says, yes, like, wouldn't you follow up and say exactly what time did you arrive or approximately when did you arrive and leave? And if so, why is Doolin only writing 1.30 to 3.30? If Rick said, I left at 1.30, but I arrived around noon. I mean, we know that he's been proven to be incompetent for Doolin, the conservation officer, for messing things up. Um, I don't know. I, we'll have to wait and see what Doolin says on the witness stand about that interaction with Rick. Hopefully they find this lost interview, which I don't know. Love, oh, sorry, love to hunt. In my opinion, Doolin and those and the close to the vest law enforcement officers knew it was Rick by 2018 but they needed more to make an arrest and still need more to make further arrests. I appreciate you love to hunt, but I agree. I disagree with you. Somebody actually made a Reddit post a while ago saying, was the young bridge guy sketch put out to kind of draw Rick out and have him, or they knew that um, somebody came forward but they did not remember like their name or who it was. So did they in April, 2019 have the strategy? We're going to say, we think a young guy did it who was parked at CPS, but they, they knew somebody was parked at CPS, but they did not know it was Rick or whatever bridge guy. So did they say, let's see if somebody comes forward, who's older, like who we think bridge guy is, if that person thinks we're only looking for a young person. However, I forget what that did not add up to me. Um, other arrests, it's been 15 months since they arrested Rick and they have not found any connection. So I'm sure some people will say that's because Rick is not connected alone or with other people. Why did um, McClellan just file like a week or two ago, these four upgraded charges where the wording was kind of weird. It had something I think that he aided or I don't know. We'll have to wait for this hearing where we'll find out hopefully more information about why McClellan felt like he could upgrade these charges and say that Rick is not just bridge guy, but also the murderer. Hopefully if he says it's because Rick confessed, he will play this full tape. And so all of us can stop arguing about this April 3rd phone call. 
Yeah, and uh, um, the professor said it was done by a fanboy of Odinist, not necessarily somebody who was an Odinist. That's the style I'm rocking today. Devoted to Mariah says, um, Rick's October 13th, 2022 interview was video recorded. His wife's will be transcribed. Um, I'm sure they were both uh, uh, videotaped, I hope. It had to have been, right? <laughs> Please tell me they didn't mess it up. JMS, Lorelai, this isn't an airport. You don't have to announce your departure. She was upset that I called Rick, Rick, instead of Richard. And she said she left. Bye. Bye bye. Um, let's see. Kevin says witness four may break the case with her testimony. If she's credible, and 100% certain her young sketch is correct. How can't the jury have doubt? 50 feet is only 16 paces. She already changed law enforcement minds on February, or sorry, April 22nd, 2019. Yeah. So it seems like this April 2019 press conference was essentially because witness four in March of 2019 came forward and said she was frustrated that police never put out her younger guy sketch. She said, she, that sketch was a 10 out of 10 um, of who she saw. But my issue, Kevin, is as a jury member, I'm going to believe or at least put more faith in somebody who walks three feet next to this guy, bridge guy, which these four juveniles saw, like, as I said before, these four juveniles and witness four all saw Libby's video and said the guy they saw was the guy they passed or saw from 50 feet away. As a jury member, I'm just going to believe more the description of somebody three feet than 50 feet. Am I wrong? I know people disagree with me with a lot of stuff, but how am I wrong to trust somebody's um, eyewitness testimony from three feet compared to 50 feet? Was she wearing sunglasses? Was she wearing contacts? What's her eyesight? I mean, I, I think the same thing should be said of these three girls, but to me, 50 feet and three feet is a large difference. Um, that's all I'm saying about that. Peter has a question for Tom. Here's a scenario. Gull and company are going to intentionally stuff the case up. Rick gets out. Member of the public vigilantes, Rick, then find out it was a group with Rick and Elvis and Elvira the queen of the Halloween dark, they're Patsy. Are you smoking doobie, Peter? <laughs> I don't know. People are say, saying, oh, the state is trying to kill Richard Allen. Well, they, they're doing a horrible job because it's 15 months that they've had a chance and he's still alive. I do agree that he seems to be, his situation is not, I mean, I'm sure he's going to give a one-star Yelp review to Westville and Wabash. But yeah, there's some noise outside if you hear knocking. Um, anyway, whatever. I'll, I'll move on to the next um, ridiculous comment. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm being sarcastic, Peter. Don't get upset. And I still did not see your explanation about when I, when I said something about a Texas guardsman. Sweet dude, Shibby, you're still here. They never lost, what? They never lost the Rick's statement. They just never thought he was bridge guy until Ron Logan died. I'm very curious to hear why they went back to Rick in, or not went back to, in the PCA it said on, sorry, some of these facts are hard to remember. On September 21st, 2022, Liggett was presented with a tip narrative from Doolin of Rick. So what led to this September 21 finding this long lost tip? Some people have speculated that we know that the Wabash River search for 
supposedly related to Kagan and possibly his dad, started, I think, around August 18th or 19th of 2022. And from what I remember, it lasted about five weeks, which I don't know. At the end of this, there's been rumors that Doug Carter took a helicopter to this Wabash River area. I mean, why isn't he driving? That's a waste of taxpayer money. Um, the rumor was that they did not find anything related to Delphi. And Doug Carter said, I want you to go back to the beginning and start over. So did they finally say, maybe we should look at Orion from tip 00001. And then when they got to tip 74, they're like, oh crap, what the hell is this? Richard Allen Whiteman was there between 1.30 to 3.30. Why don't Tony Liga was like, why don't I know about this guy? Which there's just a lot of incompetence. So I, I'm really curious to see how this all played out. I don't know. Michelle, thank you. I appreciate it. But that's enough from you. I, I appreciate your generosity there. Hi, Angel Ray. What's your analysis of why Rick did not see the four girls? How far behind am I? Oh my God, almost an hour. <laughs> Annie is very busy working. Thank you, Annie, for all your support. What a miraculous thing. Everybody's being polite. All right, thank you. All opinions are welcome. Just please be polite. Oh, I guess there's a people thought people were not being polite. All right, let me skip over a bunch of people's opinions that probably didn't mean mean anything. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Fire tech. Do we have a clear defined time of death? I know that the, in the Frank's memo, they referenced the autopsy and said that one of the girls, I think it was Abby. I'm almost certain it was Abby died a slow death. It was not really explained any further. They did. I think the autopsy report may have been included as one of the 126 exhibits in the Frank's memo, but we do not have um, anything clear. I know, I think law enforcement said it was all over by 3.30. I saw on another channel that they said it happened close by there and was staged, that they were staging it at the time they were noticed they were missing. I don't know, some people say that Abby and Lib were taken away and then brought back the next, I don't even know. I, I don't agree with that um agree with that um that they were taken away and then brought back it doesn't make sense to me but i'm wrong about a lot of stuff cc could there be video camera footage of the interview between the ranger and rick um uh, i don't know i'm curious to based on this general topic um it was not mentioned at all in any of these, the PCA or the Frank's memo. Is there any video showing Rick driving to and from the trails at noon to 1.30? We know that police say his car or car matching his is 127 coming from the long way from Rick's house. There's three different ways to get um, to the trails from Rick's house. Like one is if you go through the center of Delphi and then make a right. One is if it, I think he would, would go south and then take Hoosier Heartland Highway but if Rick came from his house and that truly is, is his car at 127 and he's lying, he went like 10 minutes. And in my speculation is if he was there truly to do something bad, did he feel like he had to drive by Mears parking lot to see if there were cars there? He had to park his CPS to then walk the entire trail to see who was on the trail. If this um, opportunity to do whatever presented itself. So I'm really curious. I mean, it's been referenced that there's thousands of hours of video in evidence. So why did the defense not say we have some uh, video showing that Rick left? You can see his black car at whatever, 1232, driving through town on his way home. Why did police not include in the PCA that they have other video at 402 showing Rick's car? Wait for the trial. She elf, Ron Logan is innocent. 
he's guilty of being a jerk to women, but I don't think he's bridge guy. Um, yeah, so if you if you find somebody annoying, unfortunately you can't block me, but you can X out. Um, you can like click on somebody's name and ignore their chats if somebody's triggering you. <laughs> Thank you, Angel Ray. Sorry, I'm looking for topics we have not discussed. Bees says, Mitch Westerman, who's the guy who took photos of the bodies um, in Baldwin's conference room, Mitch did not sneak in to take pics that Baldwin already gave to him, just saying makes no sense. Um, that's a good point. However, Mitch said he did it. My issue with this whole Mitch Westerman thing is in there, there's like these discovery rules where Baldwin and Rosie or anybody who was looking at this evidence had to sign something and say, uh, submit it to judge Gall. So as some people have said, why is Baldwin consulting with a former employee? who could not even pass the bar to get his whatever, to become an attorney. I don't know. Um, so what's the update on Mitch Westerman? I don't know. Is his trial scheduled for May? He's pleading not guilty, but I don't know what we'll find out. Vince says, or Vincina says, Next thing we are going to hear that Rick killed himself, cover up in place. I mean, I understand that they say that Rick has suffered from depression since his early days is how they, the defense described it. So I'm not going to act like he's not totally having horrible days, like mentally. But on the other hand, I mean, I just keep it honest. If you're innocent, why are you telling Wabash and Westville people that statements that are you're suicidal like why are you killing yourself over if you're innocent i mean I, I understand that he's in a horrible situation where he has not been proven guilty yet and that's upsetting but i don't know why is he say, saying he's gonna kill himself kevin says detective click says no ritual sacrifice at the crime scene. But then he says he doesn't think Rick is involved, confusing like everything else in this case. Yeah, so Click, I guess, said he thought the Odinists were involved, but it was not a ritualistic sacrifice like the defense started out with the, on the, like, the first page of the Frank's memo. That white supremacist Odinist carried out a sacrificial ritual of two white girls. Hi, Michelle. What do you think law enforcement have to up the new the four new charges against Rick? Do you think they have more than they are letting on? Yes, there has to be something else. I mean, we've only really seen what they thought they found up to the October 13th, 2022 search warrant. As I've said before, I mean, there's could be phone data and this car data, I think might, might be huge. The, my concern is that five and a half years later, they lost it. And if they had properly looked into Rick a few days later and ex examined it at that time, would it have would it have been a slam dunk case at that point if they got that data showing okay Rick was there one thirty to four o two or something like that? Time will tell. Hopefully, hi Miranda. Venus gal, I saw someone the other day say Rick is five foot zero inches. How's that for someone having an agenda and trying to put false facts out? Well, I was um, surprised to hear Labrado say that Rick was five foot six because it seemed like the general idea was that he was five foot four 
that's what the defense kept saying in the Frank's memo. How could a five foot four guy do this to two girls? Um, yeah. I know that um, some guy named Steve on, on YouTube went with a tape measure to the courthouse and like put it up to the point where Rick was seen previously going in. And I'm certain, or I'm almost certain he said it was around five foot three to five foot four. I don't know. I don't know where Labrador was getting the five foot six information. Fire tech, were they murdered at the spot they were found? It seems like at least Libby was dragged um, a short area. People debate this fire tech, but I think they were in the same general area. Hi, Jack Sparrow. Do you think they rushed into an arrest so, so the sheriff could look good for re-election, like Rick's attorney says? I, I don't think there's this huge conspiracy to arrest anybody just to get t Tony Liggett to be elected sheriff. I, I don't know. I mean, if they saw this car at, on the 127 Hoosier Harvest Door, and it matches the car in Rick's driveway headed towards CPS at 127, which would line up if he parked at CPS around 128 and then walks to Freedom Bridge and then walks to start on the trail. And these four girls see a guy matched. If you saw my video before this, there's like 14 different similarities between Bridge Guy and Rick. I mean, I, I think there was enough to at least um, get the search warrant of his house. As I said before, we don't know if there were three girls or not at 1205, according to Rick. So if Liggett knows there were not, there was not another group of three girls at 1205, plus this 127 car matching Rick's, if it does truly match. I mean, those are um, powerful things to say that Rick is possibly lying. So no, I, I don't think there's a huge like conspiracy just to get Tony Liggett uh, elected. Sweet dude Shibby, yes, Rick is huge. Law enforcement should call for backup next courthouse perp walk. Yeah, I. I think it's way too excessive to shackle him and this like having this whatever a shock vest. I mean, the dude is five foot four to five foot six. There's like 10 officers. He's not gonna run away or skip away like Little Red Riding Hood. Roll. I'm still waiting to hear or see some real evidence that Rick did anything illegal at all. Well, tune in. Don't tune in until October 15th, because that's when I guess the good, not the good stuff, but the quote unquote real evidence will be shown at that time. How far? Oh my God. How far are we on? <laughs> what are we at here? An hour and a half. I don't know. I'll, I might go, I'm going to stop at uh, two and a half hours. So another 57 minutes, unfortunately. Let me take a drink. Oh my God. Um, Aspen Connor says, I don't envy those 12 jurors that get out on this trial. Some people said like the jury pool is going to be tainted by this stuff. I don't know. A lot of people don't pay attention to the internet and who knows how much TV they watch. So I think they can find 12 people who are not as obsessed with this case as everybody here. So I don't know if I'm being honest, I'm not expecting like a resolution at the end of this trial as in whatever, Rick is found guilty, 
there was enough evidence presented to convince every single person that he is guilty. I don't know. Hopefully this, these families get some kind of uh, relief and answers and including Rick and his family. If he's innocent, I mean, it's horrible that he's going to be in prison for the next, um, whatever, nine months. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, his, hopefully his uh, lawyers submit this 70 day speedy trial request. Hi, unhinged. Please don't make videos about me. Fig solves. You have a very bad reputation these days. Rainy days makes a good point. Um, plus the poster, uh, the wanted poster said that the eyes were not blue. And I believe Rick's eyes are blue. Rick has some big ass pupils. If I'm being blunt, um, speaking of blunts anyway, um, I, I don't know. I'm curious to know who said that they were not blue. Obviously there's seems to be only, um, five total witnesses. There was the four girls, the younger sister apparently did not really see him. So it's the three older girls who walked about three feet from him. Witness four was 50 feet away. So she could not see eye color. And the um, fifth one is the driver. Like she really can see eye color. So I don't know. We'll have to wait. And we have to wait for the trial to hear the final testimony of all these witnesses. Kennedy says, Tobe Lesenby, we haven't heard from him recently. Somebody check on him. Tobe said he recognized the voice, yet he interviewed with Rick at CVS. He interviewed with Rick at CVS? I mean, he interacted with Rick at CVS? Um, I don't know, stay tuned. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Anna, for clarifying. Out here in the West, there are Taco Bells in fairly small towns. Thank you. That was the most important thing of the live chat. Sorry, I'm just um, looking for something now. Fig solves. I think it's sus that Tom knows the names of runes off the top of his head. It's only the Feihu and the Ansus. Um, those are the only ones I know because of the F tree. I'm not an Odinist. I'm not working for the prosecution. I'm not pushing a narrative. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not doing more live chats. Yeah, when's my next live chat? Hopefully not soon. I might do one on the 13th, the um, unfortunately the seven year anniversary of this case. Who would you guys want to see if I do a February 13th live chat? It's so boring with me just by myself. Who would you want me to have on here? No crazy people. Thank you. Kevin wonders, where would we be if the original prosecutor, Robert Ives, and the original judge, Benjamin Diener, stayed in their positions? Yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> also odd, they both left. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, I think Ives said he wanted to, like, take a break or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why he retired early. I forget. He did give a reason, but I forget. Uh, Diener said, yeah, we know what he said. Anna says there's no reason the F tree couldn't have been made by a bloody hand grasping the tree. I know there's a YouTube channel, um, True Crime Web with a guy named Steve or Mr. Steve. Um, he does, he did a lot of, um, very good, interesting, like recreations of collecting branches and he used like synthetic blood. Um, I don't know. It could be possible that Libby like put up her hand to like prevent the knife or whatever. I don't want to get too graphic. And then it may be spattered onto the tree. It's spatter, not splatter for people who don't know. 
Um, I don't know, it just seemed too defined to me, Anna, that like vertical line. We'll see. Malibu says, it seems like a heinous murder by a deranged, cruel man who mildly attempted to cover the bodies. I just can't get with the Otis theory, not at all. I think these phone calls at 311 and 314 from Abby, or sorry, Libby's father, as he drove to pick her up and then parked at the Mears parking lot. I don't know. Did did the phone ring? Did Bridge Guy see it? And did it say like dad twice within three minutes? And Bridge Guy or Rick or a group of Odinists were like, crap, this girl's father might be looking for her. That was around 3, 11, 3, 14. Then how do you get to the point with supposed bridge guy being seen at 357 um, closer to CPS? At the end of my video that aired before this, I do have that um, spreadsheet, but I understand at the end of it, I did say like three, I think I said 338 to 353. And I kind of kept that for like going from the crime scene to CPS. But as I also said, it takes like 10 to 11 minutes to walk from Mears to CPS. So walking from the crime scene to Mears itself could have taken like 10 minutes. But the other actions I included in that spreadsheet, I truly did like do a minimum and maximum time for each action. And in that spreadsheet, I included the maximum amount of time. So I do think it could have been possible that bridge guy who was seen at 357 was like the killer. I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully. Fire Tech says the William Labrado attorney interview is what we made sorry is what made me feel more comfortable and confident that rick is innocent well i don't even know why this guy is even talking i, I, don't, I don't know not you fire tech i'm talking about libredo like why is he giving interviews saying he was not released from the case until i think february 2nd officially by gull and fire tech I, I think you were late watch my video if you want that aired before this, that like, um, what's it called? How did Richard Allen not see bridge guy? It's more important. How did Rick not see these four girls who were on the trails or the trail for 60 of the minutes that Rick was there? I can't get past that until you fire tech, give me an explanation. Aspen Connor thinks the jurors will be sequestered 100%. I think at some point they were saying that they were going to be bussed in every day from Allen County to the Carroll County Courthouse. Who knows? Hi, USA Libertarian. Are there two groups of four girls? From what we know, Rick said he passed three girls around 1205. And we know there are four girls who were exiting between like 125 to 130 ish. Soon after they took a 126 photo, they said they saw a bridge guy entering from Freedom Bridge soon around the time Rick would have been leaving Freedom Bridge. Federico, fig, cause Tom is like a savant. Some of you know I, I write jokes and I recently wrote one. Some people are called an idiot savant, but people call me an idiot, period. I have other stuff about that. I'm not here to tell jokes, sorry. Um, <laughs> nobody's sorry. All right, go. SP74 says, Labrado, I was pronouncing it wrong as Labrado previously, but apparently it's Labrado, said killed, not murdered. What's the difference, SP? Anna says, all the pieces still do not fit for me. I agree. I'm still not 100% certain that Rick was bridge guy. Concerning Rick's presumed guilt, people would say he's presumed innocent, Anna. Um, but I cannot absolutely rule him out. Anna, what did you think about my video? How does Rick not see these four girls? And how do they not see him? 
he's on a bench, according to Rick. They walk past all six benches twice. Rick's not doing a crossword puzzle. The Unhinged, Libredo said great things about Judge Gull. That speaks volumes. Yes, he did say that she is a very fair judge, which some people were saying like, oh, Le she only picked Libredo and Scremen because they're both from Allen County. She's an Allen County judge, obviously, and they're public defenders in Allen County. And she's like, people are like, oh, they're going to do whatever Judge Gull says and then when they filed the motion to transfer, people were like, okay, maybe he's okay. And then he just said, Rick is innocent, but also Gull is a great, fair judge. Everybody's triggered about everything. All right, next. <laughs> but also, why is he even talking? What happens if Baldwin and Rosie are removed? And then what is Gull gonna do? Say, okay, Labrado, even though he went on TV and said Rick is 100% innocent and these other stuff, I don't know. Is she going to have to find two other people to replace Baldwin and Rosie and Labredo and Scremen? Hi, Rohamno. I always remember your... Um, face, but I never know how to pronounce your name. Thank you for becoming a member. Hopefully you find it worth it, worth the $2.99. Sorry, I'm looking for comments. Tiff says, where's the physical evidence in this dang case? No DNA, good point. No shoe prints. Oh, I don't know about that. We'll have to wait and see. No drag marks. Um, they said there were drag marks. Um, law enforcement forgot to take the branches from the crime scene into evidence. I know that's the WTF is very valid about that. So they said that these four or four branches on Libby and three on Abby we're still at the crime scene for a few weeks later. That's what um, I think Barbara McDonald said on Court TV. One of the branches had a swan end. I don't know what that is. Uh-oh, Siri. Hey, Siri. What's a swan end? Eileen, thank you for what you sent me. Sorry. <laughs> Uh-oh, Siri. Uh -oh, she's I don't see swan and Eileen in your contacts. Oh, my God. Sorry. Who would you like to read messages from? Nobody. Shut up. Hey, Siri. What is a swan end? I found this on the web. I'm gone. No, go back to sleep. Sorry. Um, I guess you mean like they said that one of the branches was freshly cut at the crime scene. But there were seven branches. So it's like, why would only one be freshly cut? It seemed like they were insinuating that it was brought to the crime scene. And I know some people don't believe that the guy in Libby's video could be bridge guy or the killer. It doesn't look like he has a branch in his jacket. I don't know. But Tiff, thank you for your comments as always. And thank you for becoming a member. Hi, Alec. Yay, a live chat on the weekend. How much more time? Um, <laughs> about 40 more minutes. Remind me to end this chat in 40 minutes. Let me skip over a bunch of stuff, sorry. Danielle has a degree in forensic psychology and remember a similar class. All right, I must have missed your first uh, comment, but congratulations on your degree.
Wow, somebody agreed with me um, like an hour and seven minutes ago. What? <laughs> Thank you to my moderators um, if you're having to actually do some work. I would give free memberships to moderators, but I can't like specifically give um, memberships to people. Hi, Bren. This is actually an interesting point. Let me sit up. I guess he, bridge guy, could have taken his jacket off and they saw his tan hoodie. So I know a lot of us have speculated about this bridge guy video and like around his waist, there's some kind of brown thing. People wondered, is it a sweatshirt or something or a shirt or like a fanny pack? One thing that I thought of was... um. It seems like there are items in his uh, bridge guy's jacket when they got over to the north side of the creek and he was going to finally put this plan into place if it was something that he'd been fantasizing about did he take off the blue jacket knowing that he was going to stab people and there's going to be blood spatter so was the ja blue jacket like put on the whatever the ground away from where he had them do stuff i don't know i'm very interested to hear witness i'm sorry the 357 witness say her description of who she saw did he have a hood on did he have a hat on did he have what did he have a goatee we know i think witness four said he was freshly shaved like he had no facial hair and as i said before these three juveniles who passed him within a few feet one of them said he had a scarf up to his nose so the first bridge guy uh, sketch has like a goatee so what did the 3 57 p.m witness say about his uh face and his facial hair or are they basing it off of the bridge guy video where it looks like he's gene shallot with a huge mustache i don't know anna says yeah if, it, if this is planned how much of this like all these fine details did this person plan Anna says, in her esteemed opinion, that wasn't a diss, Anna. Um, Bridge guy had layered jackets so he could change colors when leaving. Probably that could very well be. Tina says, um, if the video of car was good enough to show what color or type of car, what the heck took so long? I mean, come on someone within a mile of bridge has that same car it would be end of story this is a very good point tina another thing that i i don't think i've ever said this in a live chat i've said everything like 15 times in a live chat if liggett and lesenby saw this in uh sorry saw this hoosier harvester camera like from one to whatever five o'clock looking at every single car that went by and they know these four juveniles said bridge guy passed from Freedom Bridge around 1.30. So they look at this Hoosier Harvester camera who is headed towards CPS a few minutes before 1.30. I've said previously that there's hardly any cars on 300. So it's not like there's a lot of traffic going by. So Lesenby and Liggett see that there's this black car with black hubcaps, not silver, which is Rick's car, apparently. They drive, by, Rick works at CVS, which is one block from the uh, Carroll County Sheriff's Office. And I've showed previously, like Rick is out front, backing his car into that spot. How did Liggett and Lesby not say, hey, that car there looks like the car headed towards CPS at 127? I don't know. But I don't know. My, I'm concerned about the quality of the video from Hoosier Harvest Store camera. Is it good? One of my subscribers made a very good point that police uh, confiscated Rick's car. Hopefully they were as smart as ex Tina L and drove it by Hoosier Harvester in the afternoon so they can compare both and say, okay, here's the February 13th, 2017 car at 127. Here is Rick's car around one to one or two o'clock, depending on how the sun changed or whatever between whatever, between October and February. But to give like a fairly good idea, was this Rick's car at 127 
kind of proving that Rick was lying about being there and leaving at 1.30 when he arrived. I think somebody previously said, well, we don't see his license plate. Can you see the driver? I don't know. We'll see. Time will tell. Hi, True Crime Web, Steve. I was talking about you like 10 minutes ago, but your comment is over an hour old. Um, thank you. <laughs> I don't like to highlight nice things, but thank you for the nice things that people said. Danielle is giving good advice to parents. Don't let your kids get a forensic, or what is it? Psychological, I don't know. Forensic psychology degree, sorry. My degree is in English and it was useless too. So we have that in common, Danielle. CJK, True Crime Web would be a fun guest. Yes, Steve is on my list. Steve, what are you doing February 13th around 8 p.m. Eastern? If you wanna join me, you're welcome. Jamie, you're getting your facts messed up. Are you smoking doobie? Oh, sorry, she doesn't care. Peace and love, y'all. When did Muddy Bloody Witness report the 60s car? Muddy Bloody was not the person who said that. Muddy Bloody, sorry, Witness 4 at 2.15 reported the car from 1960s. She talked to police within the first few days. Um, was it before or after Sloan Bella Psychic? Oh my God, you're, I know you're into psychics. Um, she had a vision of a 60s car. Uh oh, Jamie, stay away from those videos. Oh my gosh. Peace and love, y'all. That's what Jamie always says. Um, all right, that's the last one. Sorry, yeah, me too. Hi, Annabelle. Try being confused and hosting a live chat with 372 people watching you. How much more time? Everybody wants to know. 34 more minutes and then we're excused. Yes, let's be polite to everybody. We all have different opinions. Let's be polite. Bees9 says, look at the grill of a Ford Comet. It looks a lot like the grill of TT's old truck. Who's TT? You mean TK, Kagan's dad? Wonder if Comet was backed in so he, she only saw front of it. But why? No, be sorry. You tried it. I denied it. My issue is, and I'm not just going to say why. I'm going to tell you why. Witness 4 sees his car from the 1960s backed into CPS at around 2.15. Five minutes earlier at 2.10, there's a witness who, who said he saw a purple PT Cruiser or a small SUV back. Both of these people within five minutes, see a car. They both drew, drew diagrams, essentially showing it was backed in to CPS, which Rick said he backed his car up to CPS. I don't know. Do you see where I'm going? Cause I don't see where I'm going. It just doesn't seem right to me that somebody at 210 sees a somewhat modern car backed up to CPS and within five minutes that purple PT cruiser left. And then five minutes later, witness four sees a car from the 1960s in the same spot. And the witness four was a person who said people hardly ever park in that odd location up against CPS. They usually pull in right and make a left in CPS because that is where the trail is. So like, why are you pulling your car all the way into the fr uh, Frank slot. Oh my gosh. And when I was recording this, I used the FB abbreviation and for Freedom Bridge. And when I was recording it, I said like Facebook bridge or something. I don't know. Anyway, I need, I need a nap. Um, and I lost my train of thought. So people like pull in at the front there. So why is somebody pulling all the way in and then backing up onto grass up against an old building? when you don't know if there's like whatever glass, broken glass there that's gonna ruin your tires. It just seems like such a huge coincidence to me. Um, let's see, what did I say? That was inappropriate. 
Let me skip over 30 minutes of comments. Hold on. Oh my gosh. Who who said this? Let me say. Who's click? Click, Ferency, and Murphy were the three officers who wrote this report saying that these like five Odinists, they thought they were the per, the people involved in the murders. Hi, Sasha. McCain, also known as Dave McCain and flannel shirt guy, FSG, was there apparently at the exact time too. As I said, we're gonna have to wait for the trial to hear who was where and when. We know that flannel shirt guy, McCain, was there around uh, three, three to 3.15 at least because he saw, I guess the arguing couple guy and he saw Libby's father. Something new that I learned over the past few months was his brother, Dan McCain, drove, or drove, rode a bicycle to the trails. I think maybe it's closer to four o'clock. Rumors, all the stuff is rumors. Um, he was captured on a camera, like a trail camera, possibly near the Mears parking lot. So my issue with that is if Rick was bridge guy or somebody else was bridge guy walking like from the cemetery area to, first of all, I don't understand how somebody can walk on 300 and not be seen, first of all, by Libby's father parked at Mears by 314. I believe um, this older woman, not older woman, but Cheyenne and her friend, they left, I think around four, or I don't know. So if she was parked there at that time, like how did bridge guy walk past Mears lot and not be seen? How did he walk past past Hoosier Harvester and camera? And in the PCA, it's not referenced that a guy or bridge guy was seen walking on the Hoosier Harvester camera, unless it's a camera that only has like motion activation based on a certain speed. So it's only cars going like whatever over 20 miles an hour would uh, initiate it. I don't know. So I was looking at the Hoosier Harvest store in my free time, like I need a better hobby. Um, there's like a huge pine tree, like a Christmas tree. So get ready to be triggered by that blocking Rick's car or this 127 car. I don't know. We'll see. But final point on that, the Hoosier Harvest store also was referenced as confirming Kelsey's car leaving the trails around 149. Witness four's car coming and going the 228 car and the 357 car. So it was reliable enough to confirm those four cars. So stay tuned to see if it was Rick's car. And if you think Rick is 100% innocent, what are you going to say if there are no noticeable differences between Rick's car and the 127 car? I'm waiting to, you know, I'm going to like do a comparison of the two. Joan finds it very strange. We have not heard from, uh, sorry, former friends of Rick. Well, I don't have any friends, so if I get arrested, you won't hear from them. Anyway, very minimal. At the pool hall, she ordered, what? At the pool hall, she ordered on video. He didn't seem to talk to guys, even though went three times a week, man of secrets like Long Island serial killer. Um. So... We were talking before about Tobe Lesenby reference or knowing he heard like bridge guy's voice, but cannot place it right after Rick got arrested, the owner of JC's bar, which is what you're talking about, which I think most of, you know, like that's like the local bar that Rick would go to play pool and stuff. The owner said after Rick was arrested, Rick's voice did not match bridge guy, which that's very compelling. However, and I only use that word, however, when talking about this case, however, it's two totally different scenarios. A guy walking up to two girls outside trying to scare them to go down the hill and sound intimidating, or somebody in a bar where there's music playing and drunk people raising their voices. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not explaining it away, but I'm just saying.
Sparky wants to know who saw the Odinist near the crime scene that horrible day. Well, if you ask some people, they said this 830, um, there's this married couple who returned home at around 830. Like, what were they doing out that early? That's what I want to know. Um, I'm kidding. They pass like by their, there's like, I'm assuming most of you guys know all the stuff that I talk about. There's like mailboxes at the start of this um, private drive that then winds through, goes under the bridge, and there's like a house or two at the end. So they come home around 8.30 and they said that there was like a guy who was like suspicious around these mailboxes at the start of the private drive around 8.30 a.m. Some people speculated it could have been the young bridge guy sketch. Some people speculated it could have been this Elvis Fields guy. But as far as I've seen Sparky, nobody saw any of these five accused Odinists near the crime scene that day. I don't know. Charmaine, I hope you save money using coupons at Walmart before to afford that. Thank you. You know, I appreciate you so much. Thank you. And oh my gosh, you're a member for a year. I appreciate you. Thank you. A, she's Canadian. Sorry. <laughs> Where's Sunny Justice? That's what I want to know. She's at Walmart. All right, go. Um, let's see. How much more time? Only 24 more minutes. Everyone watch at half speed so Tom can catch up. No, stop commenting so I don't fall behind. What's this? Sorry. I don't even know what you're talking about. Angel Ray, what about the other girl who was, I don't know, killed and had sticks on top of her? Anyone remember that? No. JDR, just because the professor cannot interpret it does not mean it's not relevant to the killer. That's a good point. However, however, as I stated before, if you're an Odinist doing a ritual ritualistic sacrifice of two white girls, are you really like leaving branches in a rune on each girl and then writing in a rune using the blood of one of the girls? So police are like, oh, this is Odinism. Let's look for Odinists. Or if you had like a sexual motive, are you leaving branches trying to like stage it? So they think, like law enforcement thinks it's Odinist related and it's truly not. I don't know. I'm not saying I have the answer, JDR. I did have one other thought. Um, I don't know. I'm sure it wasn't important. <laughs> oh, I, I don't know, Angel Ray. I try to avoid true crime. Unfortunately, I'm not successful. Shelley has heard of several white nationalist crimes, including murder. The Odinists I know in Carroll County and surrounding are straight up white supremacists. I'm not denying that, but why are white supremacists killing white girls? I just don't understand. Tiff has a spreadsheet. Oh my gosh, of law enforcement errors. Tiff says, number one, no evidence of collection of sticks or branches. Also, um, I, I, actually it's number three, no F tree and evidence, improper collection of bullet. I agree, but however, at the time law enforcement did not have all the evidence. So there might be video which followed proper procedure, which is one of my main issues with everybody in Indiana, not following proper procedure. Don't trigger me. Um, so there could be uh, videotaped evidence, Tiff, of them properly extracting the bullet or the unspent round, which I guess time will tell. My issue or concern is like, I think at one point it was said that there were maybe up to five or six um, like investigators who processed this scene. So why are they not following procedures? I just don't understand. Four, Doolin lost the interview. I don't know that he lost it though, Tiff. Somebody did not properly follow up. I don't know that it was Doolin's responsibility. Five, Whiteman name incorrect. Yeah, so apparently on this piece of paper, Doolin wrote Richard Allen. He lived on Whiteman Drive. So I guess he wrote close to that. Whiteman, 
I don't know if it was Doolin or whoever input it into the FBI system thought it was Alan was his middle name. Um, final, or there's more, I'm sure you just couldn't fit it in. Six, zero recognition of Rick as bridge guy by witnesses. Well, I think we're gonna have to wait to the trial to see if these girls who passed him are gonna say, yes, Rick does match who I saw. Also, would the 357 car driver say it? I doubt witness four would, but we'll see. Sasha says, maybe Mr. Allen committed the act and someone else videoed it and then Rick left. I don't know. I mean, I'm really going to be, I'll be honest. I'm going to be shocked if there is somebody else charged with this. Why? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. USA Libertarian, the Pur Purdue professor said something to the effect of Odinist poser. Um, he said Odinist fanboy, whatever that means. A fan of whatever. I don't know. Somebody who has issues. I don't know. <laughs> so that sounds like staging or misdirection to me. I don't, I don't know. We'll have to wait for the trial to hear various perspectives. Humano says, uh, what do you, you say? Their case is being, the case is being made for Odinists. Please don't type and drink at the same time. No, I'm kidding. The, the case is being made. I hope she's laughing. She probably left. Um, the case is being made for Odinists, but also naming some, and they're more white supremacists. The crime, if ritual, is more Odin than white. Oh my gosh, you're so drunk. It's early in the morning in Australia. Um, try again. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be mad. She's not mad. She, I know her. CJK, this is a good chat. Different viewpoints. Yeah, I welcome different viewpoints. Or I pretend to. Hi, it was me. Thank you for becoming a member. See you at the member chat uh, Saturday, February 17th at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Shelly says, the FBI Behavioral Analysis Unit at Quantico, in capital letters, said the crime scene was that of Odinism, that someone could have staged it to frame it if it wasn't Odinist responsibility. I, I'd like to see what their report is. And I think the defense also said they wanted to see the report because they only like heard like a sentence that like your first sentence, but they did not see the full report. So I don't know, McClellan said by November 1st, they should have had it. Is that a reason why Labrado a few days ago said he did think Odinists were involved? How does Labrado explain to me that these four girls did not see Rick sitting on a bench doing a crossword puzzle for 60 minutes. I'm serious. I'm, I'm joking, but I'm serious at the same time. <laughs> Cruz and Susan, was any DNA found at the crime scene? Yes. So various people like Lesenby and Doug Carter have said there was DNA found. And there's been an issue for many years, obviously not being able not being able to match it up to anybody and have an arrest. It's been stated that Rick's DNA did not match the crime scene. So I speculated previously was this, I don't know, there's different types of DNA and I don't know anything about it. So we all know that we all know that. Um, anyway, I speculated, could there have been like a fingerprint or something on one of the girls like sweatshirts or something like that? because Kelsey Libby's sister said that she would keep sweatshirts and jackets in the back of her car. So we know that Libby wore a Delphi swimming sweatshirt, like a black and gold swimming sweatshirt. Had she previously gone to a friend's house or a sporting event somewhere at school where her sweatshirt was off and she says to her friend, hey, can you hand me my sweatshirt? So like a female friend hands her her sweatshirt, Libby gets in Kelsey's car and throws it in the back on their way to the trails on the 13th, she grabs it and puts it on. 
could the DNA have been matched up to that girl? I know people are like, Tom, you're an idiot, which that's been established, but that's just a supposed thing that I thought. I wondered, did they finally match up that? I'm sure Nick McClellan was watching that live chat that I said that. Did they ask Libby's friends? Did you ever, I'm, I'm kidding, not, not really, but partially. Did they somehow find out that maybe a friend, the D DNA belonged to a friend of Libby from like a sleepover touching the sweatshirt? One possible explanation, probably not, but just one thing I thought of. I'm not doing a deep dive on that. How far? Oh my God. I'm an hour and 15 minutes. Oh my gosh. I'm skipping over an hour. Oh my God. All these people. Hopefully somebody read your comment. How much more time? 14 minutes. Aspen Connor agrees with me every 45 minutes. Thank you. I don't know what I said though. That's the problem. Um, Jojo says, when you mentioned a saw at the end of my video that aired an hour ago or so, used to cut a branch, in my opinion, he cut it with a knife. Some trees are softer than others. Nobody had a saw in the woods. Yeah, I mean, my issue with the recently cut branch, I have not seen what it looks like. I don't want to. But it's on Ron Logan's property, like in the back. So why would Ron Logan be cutting branches in that weird area? He has a ton of trees. So I, I don't know. I'd like some more like clarification on that, Jojo. Do a deep dive and let me know. Hi, Ruckus. Eyewitnesses are horrible witnesses. Over 80% of wrongful convictions are due to eyewitnesses. All right. I'm just saying, like, I would, as a jury member, I'd listen to, or not listen to, hopefully I wouldn't fall asleep. Um, I don't want to say trust and act like witness four is untrustworthy, but anybody three feet away to me is more reliable than somebody 50 feet away. Tiff wants to throw out all eyewitness testimony. Even three feet away, Tiff? I'm still almost an hour away oh my, or behind. Way too many people typing. All right, here we go. Nobody cares what you guys think. I'm kidding. I'm still, I'm going through so many comments and it's still not anywhere near being caught up. All right, let me get past under 30 minutes. Here we are. I'm under 30 minutes behind. Um, Kennedy says, why wait? to read Baldwin and Rosie's Frank's motion, uh-oh, do not include a, an apostrophe in Frank's or you're gonna trigger Tom, and just now rule on denying it, but agree to a Frank's hearing from Scremen and Labrado. Labrado, sorry. I don't think she, she, that memo was so freaking long. She said it was like 1500 pages. We know it was 136 pages plus 126 exhibits and seven hours of deposition. So she got it September 18th. She does have other cases and things to do. She has to go to a cookout at her nephew Fig Solves. Um, <laughs> sorry. So I don't think she could, I mean, she has other stuff to do, you guys. Like, it's a huge report that she had to read. So I know people are like suspicious of her and she did write in some kind of um, motion. If, sorry, this stuff is hard to remember all this stuff. Something about if the new public defenders, Scremen and Labredo, want to like take up this Frank's hearing request, I think she wrote a hearing will be scheduled, which freaked people out because obviously we know she had not um, decided on it for Walden and Rosie. I'm not certain that she was guaranteeing Scremen and Labrado a hearing. It might have just been like misworded, like if they want to submit their own version of a Frank's memo by Scremen and Labrado, Labrado, sorry, she would take it under consideration. In my opinion, nobody cares. I think I would deny a Frank's hearing. I think without the lies referenced before by Liggett, 
I still think there was enough stuff in there to search Rick's house. If there's a car resembling him, his at 127 and law enforcement knows that there was not three girls at 1, uh, 1205. I don't know. There's a few other things that I think warranted the warrant from being approved. I don't know what's going on here. Um, oh God, I don't, but hi, Carla. Your picture looks kind of inappropriate, but anyway, sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh, don't get upset by my um, ridiculous sarcasm. Hi, Kay, nice to see you. I'm leaving in eight, nine minutes. Hi, Marshall, nice to see you. Yeah, I need to eat and take a nap. What have we not talked about in the next in the next nine minutes? <sighs> Lots of opinions on both sides. Kay says these defense lawyers are hideous. Yes, we don't know all the evidence they have. Well, apparently, McCleveland doesn't know any of the evidence that the defense has because they haven't handed over anything. So why are they delaying? handing stuff over to McClelland. Um, McClelland said he's not talking on the phone to Baldwin and Rosie anymore. No more three-way calling. He want, He's only going to um, reply via email. I don't know. I've heard that McClelland is quick in replying. And for people, I've said this before, and people get triggered. Though I do not work for McClelland. I, the only time I've ever emailed McClelland, I've never called him, just to be clear. People would not be surprised. It was because he made a mistake, or he made two mistakes, at least. Um, he said something like in a filing in last September, October, something would be good for the state. But I think he meant like bad for the state. So I said, I sent him an email like, are you sure that you got that right? I've criticized him before, including saying he should not be asking for like a $5,000 raise for doing extra work. However, Nick McClelland replied to my email after 10 p.m. within about 15 to 20 minutes. And I've criticized him, but I was impressed that he replied so quick when I have emailed so many people re regarding this case and hardly anybody ever replies to me. So I'm sure he's going to reply to Baldwin and Rosie very quick. What is this thing? Angel, does the trail that goes from Freedom Bridge to the old cps building past the hoosier harvest store um watch my video that i just put out before i have a lot of like google maps um photos no it does not and there's like a hill between the trail and 300. so i, I don't know how this person bridge guy whoever he is walked from the crime scene past cars at mirrors past hoosier harvest store to get back to cps I don't know. If Rick truly is guilty and does some, some kind of plea deal, I hope he at least explains like all this stuff, at least for law enforcement and the families to know. Alex says, for myself, one of the hardest things to rationalize if you go by Rick is the kidnapper slash killer is the notion that this mid 40s CVS worker randomly decided that day time to lose his mind. I totally agree with you. As I've said, I think there are a lot of things that point to Rick being guilty. And also there's certain things that point to him being innocent. If it's true that he was telling the truth when he confessed to his wife and mom, I'm just shocked that this guy, a 44 year old married to this woman for 25 years at that time, has a daughter 22 years old at that time how the hell did he get to that point in his life that he thought this was was acceptable to approach Abby and Libby and do what he did? I don't know. A few more comments before we wrap it up. Angel, is that the third sketch with a hat that looks like Elvis Fields? Yes, that's the 8.30 a.m. supposed sketch near like the uh, start of the private drive. Mm. 
How much more time? Five minutes. I don't know what to say here. Um, let me go down to the bottom here. Uh oh, what did I miss though? Let me see. Tiff has been yelling at Tom. She needs to be banned. Let me see if I go up and see what Rucka said. Hi, understand blue. You're late. Um, let me see. I can't find what Ruckus wrote, so I'm going to move, keep it moving. Hopefully, um, Tiff, people heard you yelling what you're saying. Oh, my gosh. Sweet dude. This is my last highlight of you. McClelland is hanging on your every word, as are we all. I don't think so. I am doing a spreadsheet. Oh, my God. I'm so ridiculous. It's called, what do I want, what would I need the prosecutor to present to me as a jury member to prove his case that Rick is bridge guy and the murderer? You guys have four minutes to write in the chat. What, what are some things that you'd want the prosecutor or need to vote that Rick is guilty? What do I need to think about this? Um, I can't bring it up right now. Um, I don't know. I, I know that I said that I do want to see this um, comparison of this 127 photo, or sorry, the video from Hoosier Harvestor compared to exactly Rick's car driving by Hoosier Harvestor in whatever, 2022, if they were smart enough to do that video and to compare. That would be very convincing to me. These four girls, these juveniles who said they passed Bridge Guy around 130, if they say if McClellan plays Rick from October 13th, 2022 on video saying I was on the trails from noon to noon to 1:30, I park a CPS. I go to freedom bridge. I walk straight down the trail to the high bridge and I stood on platform one looking at the fishies. And then I turned around. I walked on the 501. I passed mirrors. I'm very interested to know which of the six benches Rick said he sat on. How, and then what did he do? What? Did, how long was he sitting on this bench? Which one was he, on, was he on? How do these girls, if they, if one after another testifies at the trial, yes, we walked by all six benches twice. We walked down the 505 too. We never saw anybody until 1.30. We never, and then yes, the guy we saw matches the guy sitting at the defense table. That's not good for Rick, obviously. And I'm missing all your comments, your responses. Um, <laughs> the unhinged, I don't blame him for not talking to them on the phone. Why would anyone want to do that and have their words twisted later? Get that paper trail, Nick McClelland. Oh my, that's a shirt. Get that paper trail. I miss, I miss, I miss so many comments. I miss like a thousand comments. So I'm sorry to anybody if I did not um, highlight your comment. Yeah, usually I start off by saying this is about Abby and Libby. I forgot to show my PowerPoints today. I'm sure everybody's so disappointed. Thank you all for joining me. Um, yeah, it's time to wrap it up. I'll do one more comment. But thank you for joining and sharing your opinions and hopefully being polite to others. Um, let's see, one final comment. All right, I'm just going to pick a random one. Venus Gal, I need to know what Rick's wife and daughter said about where he was that day and night. I need to know that also. His activities... If he worked, I don't think he worked. What work says medical records results from warrants. Yeah. I want to hear all that stuff. <laughs> I don't know. There's rumors that possibly Rick's what, uh, sorry, his daughter and his son-in-law. It's just a rumor that maybe they tipped him in. I don't know. I do not think that the, the lack of his daughter and, or sorry, his daughter by her not showing up to the court appearances, I'm not taking that to be that she thinks he's guilty or anything. 
would you really want to be on TV and have your coworker say, oh my God, that's your dad? So I understand that she's not like showing up for reasons other than whether she does or does not um, think her dad is guilty. Annabelle Stell, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you to everybody who gave me money, to put it bluntly. I appreciate it. Um, yes, little butterball. Let me go eat. When is my next live chat? I don't know. Maybe the 13th. I'll see if I can get some other people to join. That's it, everybody. I don't know. I'll look under my latest video to see everybody's explanation about how Rick and these girls did not see each other. Thank you. Goodbye to everybody. See ya.